the next lesson in our probability unit talking about mutually exclusive and overlapping events. All right, so the goal, of course, is to find the probability of mutually exclusive, overlapping, and also complementary events. So let's take a look at what some of these words mean. All right, the concept here is when we consider the probability of two events occurring, the events are called compound events. So I have two separate scenarios that are occurring, that would be compound events, like rolling two dice at the same time. Mutually exclusive events. These are events that would not have any outcomes in common at all. And overlapping events are events that have one or more outcome in common. All right, so let's take a look at some scenarios where we're comparing types of mutually exclusive events to types of overlapping events. Okay, so let's say I'm rolling a number cube, because that's a great scenario, which always uses probability. Event A is I get an even number. Event B is I get a five. So how do I know if these are mutually exclusive or overlapping? Well, one way of helping us determine whether we have mutually exclusive or overlapping events is to draw some sample spaces. Put out all of our possible outcomes and see where they fall. And when we compare mutually exclusive to overlapping events, using a Venn diagram helps get us there a little bit more easily. So the first thing I do when I'm making a Venn diagram is I draw a box. Okay, and this is going to surround my Venn diagram. And then I draw my two circles. Hopefully you're familiar with what Venn diagrams are. One circle is going to represent event A, and the other circle represents event B. So any outcome that would fall into event A would go in the inside circle, and event B would go in the B circle. Any that happened to overlap would go where it overlaps. And then anything that doesn't fall for event A or B would go in the square on the outside. Okay? So both are our possibilities. For our number cube, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So one is not an even number or a five, so it's gonna be on the outside. Two is an even number. Three, not either. Four, five, that's event B, and six. Oops, that does not look like a six. All right, so notice that for event A, two, four, six would be our possible outcomes. Event B, only the five. Well, since five is not an even number, these are exclusive events. The outcomes do not overlap. There isn't a number I can roll that would fit both events. Okay, let's look at the other scenario. Rolling the same number cube, and event A is I get an odd number. So what's the likelihood I'm going to get an odd number? And then event B is I get a number that's less than three. So one way to think of this without drawing the diagram is to ask yourself the question, can I roll a number that's less than three, that's an odd number? And if you can say yes, then you know you have an overlapping event because you know you have a scenario which one outcome would fit both possible events. Let's draw our Venn diagram though, just to show the overlapping. So event A and event B. Event A getting an odd number, so that would be one, three, and five. So three and five are event A, but one is also event B because it's a number that's less than three. Other possible outcomes for event B would also be the number two. And then four and six don't fit either event, so they're outside the circles. So notice we have this overlap right here where the two circles overlap from the Venn diagram. So that tells me if I roll a one, that's qualifying for event A and for event B. All right, so let's move on. probability of mutually exclusive events. For two mutually exclusive events, A and B, the probability that either of the events occurring is the sum of the probabilities of the events. All right, so the key here is that these are mutually exclusive. No common outcomes. So I want either event A or event B to happen. What's the probability that either of those events are going to happen? So our example says, the table below 
list the number of each type of fish in a fish tank. What's the probability that a randomly chosen fish is a minnow or a rainbow fish? Okay, so first thing I want to do is figure out what my two events are. So event A would be the probability of choosing a minnow. All right, put in the little skimmer thing and I pull out a fish and what's the chance it's a minnow? All right, and then a problem, uh, event B is, okay, I put in the little skimmer thing and maybe I pull out a rainbow fish. So those are my two events. And just to check, we want to ask ourselves, is it possible to pick out a fish that is both a minnow and a rainbow fish? And since it's not, we know that these are mutually exclusive. First thing I'm going to do is figure out the probabilities of each event separately, and then I'm going to add them. Now, I always pull them aside separately to do them first before I add them, just to make things easier. Count up how many fish you have in all. What's our total number of outcomes? So the total fish we have is 30 fish. So the probability of choosing a minnow would be 5 out of 30. And the probability of choosing a rainbow fish is 4 out of 30. All right, so that means the probability of choosing either a minnow or a rainbow fish would be the probability of the minnow plus the probability of the rainbow fish. Add those together and we get 9 thirtieths. Of course, we want to simplify this to 3 tenths. You can keep it as a fraction, put it as a decimal, or put it as a percent. It's entirely up to you. As long as it's the correct answer, I will accept any of the three ways of writing it. And then, you know, check for reasonableness. Okay? There are nine fish in the tank that are either minnows or rainbow fish. So you have nine chances out of 30 to pull out a fish that's going to either be a minnow or a rainbow fish. So that makes sense to us. Okay? Now let's take a look at overlapping events. Overlapping events, we calculate the probability in pretty much the same way as we do mutually exclusive events. But we want to subtract out the overlap, because otherwise we would accidentally count those values twice. Let's take a look at a scenario, and I'm going to shorten my uh, hinge length here, and draw us a little chart. A high school team, I'm sorry, a high school has four soccer teams. The number of players on each team is shown in the table that I'm about to draw you. A soccer player is randomly chosen. So let's draw the table first. So we have two types of team. We have a JV team, and then we have a varsity team. As our high school continues to get bigger here at KIS, we're eventually going to have JV varsity teams. All right, and then of those teams, we have boys and we have girls. All right, so I'm going to show my nice little chart here. Let's say we have 17 boys and on the JV team and 21 boys on the varsity team. We have 19 girls on the JV team and 23 girls on the varsity team. In the States, uh, soccer tends to be more popular with girls um, once you get into junior high and high school because boys tend to go and play American football, which is unfortunate because I think soccer is a much more exciting game. But anyways, that's either here or there. Okay, so the question asks, what's the probability that a player is a female student or a player on the varsity soccer team? So event A is if the player is a female student. Okay? And event B is, is the player on the varsity team? So let's look at our chart. The probability that I choose a player that is on the varsity team. I'm sorry, on the, a female on the team. <coughs> All together, we have 80 students. All right, if we add up the four numbers, it's 80 students. And so if I add up the number of girls, I have 19 plus 23, so that gives me 42. So the probability is 42 out of 80. Now notice I'm not simplifying this yet, because I'm going to be adding fractions. I want common denominators. And so I will wait to simplify at the very end. Makes my head a little bit easier to hold off on that. All right, probability of event B. Well, event B is that I choose a varsity player. There's 21 varsity boys and 23 varsity girls. So all together we have 44 
varsity players. So 44 out of 80. Now, if I were to add those two probabilities together, I would have 86 out of 80. Well, we know we, have, we can't have probabilities greater than 100%. That's impossible. So we know we need to count away some of these um, uncertainties. Because what happens if I randomly choose a boy JV player? Since that's a possibility, we know the probability is not over 100%. So let's take away the overlap. So notice here, I have 23 girls who are both girls and varsity players. So the probability that event A and B is happening is 23 out of 80. Those, tw that 20, those 23 girls are counted in both events. So we need to take away one of those countings. So that's what we're doing here. So what's the probability that I'm going to choose a player that's either a girl or on the varsity team? Notice it's just a girl or a varsity player, not a girl on the varsity playing team. Okay? That's why we're doing this a little bit more complicated. So add the probability of event A plus the probability of event B and subtract away the overlap of the probability of event A and B happening. And when we do that, we end up with 63 80s. That doesn't simplify into anything simpler. Um, and you can put it into a decimal if you wanted to. It is a terminating decimal, but it's not that easy. So I like to keep it as a fraction. So probability of event A plus probability of event A, sorry, B, minus the probability of event A and B. So picking somebody who meets both qualifications. Remember, in point, if you need to pause, rewind, go back and listen to some of this again. You know, first time around, it might be a little confusing. All right, so try this on your own. Pause here to read the two questions. You're going to figure out, are the events exclusive or overlapping? And then find the probabilities of each event. When you're ready, hit play to move on to the, uh, to the answers. All right, and here are the answers to the two questions. Again, circle any ones that you have concerns about, and we'll talk about it in class. Moving on to the very last example, complementary events. Complementary events are actually pretty easy. Basically, if you have two exclusive events, mutually exclusive events, where one or the other has to occur, then the probability of the two events together is one. They're considered complementary such as flipping a coin. The probability of flipping heads plus the probability of not flipping heads would be one, because if you don't flip heads, you're going to flip tails. So if you add them together, equals one. You're going to do one or the other. It's 100% certainty on that. So if you know the probability of something, then you can add them together. So let's say I know the probability of A, and I want to figure out the probability of not A. Well, one minus the probability of A would be the probability of not A, all right? The opposite of whatever that event is. Let's take a look at an example. That might sound a little more complicated than it really is. There's an 80% chance that, that it's gonna rain tomorrow. All right, so what's the probability that it won't rain tomorrow? It's either rain, going to rain or it's not going to rain. It's as simple as that. Well, 80% plus something equals 100%. Algebraically, you can make it look like this, or you can just say 1 minus 8 tenths would equal 2 tenths. So the probability that it's not going to rain is going to be equal to 20%, or 2 tenths, or 1 fifth, however you want to put the probability. Fraction, decimal percent, it's entirely up to you. But probability of it raining is 80%, probability of it not raining is 20%, the probability that it's either going to rain or not rain is 100%. It's going to do one or the other. All right, and to finish us off, say look at your last example. Try this one on your own. Probability that your raffle ticket is not a winner is 0 0.9998. What's the probability that your raffle ticket is a winner? All right, hopefully you've had a chance to answer it. 
because that's your 